Hello, EcoQuest Challenge volunteers, and welcome to this month's Storm the Castle EcoQuest Challenge. Uh, you may be wondering why that's the title of this uh, of this EcoQuest Challenge for this month, and it was actually inspired by one of my favorite movies, Princess Bride. I know it's appearing backwards here, but who doesn't love that movie? I love it so much that I even have my own board game of it. If you remember that final scene and uh, one of the final scenes where uh, Billy Crystal says, have fun Storm in the Castle, and they go to rescue the princess. But why EcoQuest Challenge, right? Well, in a lot of stories like Princess Bride, the objective is to rescue the princess from some, you know, evil, evil uh, kingdom leader or something that has taken the princess away, right? But in this case, in EcoQuest Challenge, we're going to be focusing on looking for the princess. But in this case, it's an invasive plant called the princess tree, um, which is a tier three or established uh, invasive plant in our lower Hudson Prism region. And I'm going to be teaching you today about some ID tricks to uh, how to how to look for it and identify it out in the field and how to distinguish it from a very similar looking tree called the Catalpa tree. So we'll be looking at two plants this month, Catalpa, as well as the princess tree. And another reason why we named it storm the castle is that I was leading an invasives walk uh, just a couple of weeks ago as part of the river ramble last month in the Hudson Valley and we were at the Castle Rock unique area in Garrison New York and along that beautiful beautiful hike with beautiful views of, um, of the Hudson Valley I came across a princess tree so have fun storm in the castle this month and looking and searching for that princess the invasive plant, the princess tree. I'm going to take you out into the field now and show you some ID characteristics to help you on your journey and your mission. Good luck. I have officially stormed the castle and located the princess. Here is the princess tree on that hike up uh, Sugarloaf Hill Trail um, off of Castle Rock Unique Area in Garrison. And I just wanted to come back and film here uh, simply because it was trail side as I was walking. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it just pops out at you. I mean, look at the size of that leaf, like a big elephant ear or something. Uh, kind of comes to like almost a heart-shaped point. And as I'm touching this, this is really what's gonna help distinguish it between like say a catalpa or something, which we'll talk about later. As I'm touching this, you know, it's very, very fuzzy. Uh, the hairs extend on both the leaves. So as a, you can also see the scale of how large this is. I mean, it is like well over a foot in, in length here and even over a foot in width as well. But it's that hairiness or fuzziness. You can also see that that extends to the twigs as well as I zoom in really close. You see those finish white hairs on the twig of the sapling as well? So really kind of cue into that. I also wanted to point out that on the stems of this, you see those bumps, those white bumps that are on there? I can even see it on another part of the princess tree, another, another one that's right next to it. You see those white bumps? They almost look like they've been sprinkled with salt. Those are lenticels, so those are used for gas exchange on it. And you can particularly see that with the younger saplings. The ones that I'm standing in here, um, you know, are maybe like uh, 10 feet tall. But um, princess trees can actually grow to be up 100 feet tall in some areas. So the ones that I'm seeing here are on the younger side. Um, but, you know, just a stark, I mean, when you're looking at trail side here, I mean, these leaves just jump out at you. They are enormous. Um, the only thing is that I can't show you on this tree here. It's seed capsules. So the seed capsules, capsules will look like pecans. Hopefully later in the trail, I can show you what those pecans look like. But on a big, huge princess tree, when it's, when it's blooming and, and really grown and mature, there can be millions of seeds coming out of just one princess tree. So this is some of the reason why it's fast growth rate, um, how tall it can grow, shading things out, and it's just seed production, so prolific, millions sometimes per tree. And these little seed pods that you can shake um, with lots of different seeds in them, millions on one tree if, if grown to be large enough. So these are the things I'm looking for on trail side, and we'll also compare them to Catalpa later on. Here's another even larger princess tree just further down on the trail. And I just wanted to point out just how large these leaves can be and just how tall these things can grow. So now we're talking about almost 30 feet up in the air and really, really huge, huge leaves. Now, unfortunately, I don't see any seed capsules on this. So I'll have to show you in the PowerPoint later in this presentation. But the other thing that I wanted to point out was the difference between Catalpa too, is that you'll notice that each of these leaves, you see how they're coming out opposite ones of each other. So, um, 
the princess tree has opposite branching and opposite leaf structure. So, and that's gonna actually be very different than what the catalpas are, as you'll see later in this field ID video. So just wanted to point this out. This is a little bit more of a mature looking bark. So the lentils you saw before are still there. You can see that there's little lines and streaks down the sides as well. Um, so as this matures, you know, the bark is going to start looking different, but um, in its younger stages of growth, definitely can see these lentils and that kind of streaking pattern on the bark as well. And opposite le uh, leaf structure and branching. I wanted to contrast the princess tree with this guy here. We are looking at a catalpa, and you can see why the leaves of a catalpa would be confused with the princess tree. Very long, comes to a point, kind of heart-shaped, right? I could clearly see this roadside as I was driving by. So both the princess tree and catalpas have that sort of roadside quality to them where it's like, wow, look at the size of those leaves. They're big, heart-shaped, right? But as I'm feeling this leaf, there's no hairiness, fuzziness, stickiness to it. It almost feels a, a little bit waxy, okay? Versus the princess tree again, which is gonna have a little bit of hair on it. There's also no hairs on the branches. That's another thing to look for. If you look at where these leaves are coming out along the stem as well, you see how they're popping out in threes. So that's another feature of the catalpas that you could be looking for as to how the leaves are coming off of um, each of the branches and, and, and stems here. So they're coming, kind of coming off in threes, but the big, probably the hallmark to know you're looking at a catalpa, look at these seed capsules, these seed pods, right? So these contain lots and lots of seeds. They're greenish now, and if I zoom in, you might see a little bit of like, almost like a purplish hue to it as well, kind of like purplish streaks. Uh, flowers will come out in mid, um, it, it depends on where you are in New York State, but uh, you may see it flowering in midsummer. But right now it's the green seed pods, they'll turn brownish and kind of over winter as well. As they open up, they contain hundreds and hundreds of seeds. And it's also called the cigar tree. I don't know if you can see this huge catalpa here under the power lines. But you see all those little string beans hanging down, essentially? So those are the seed pods of the catalpa versus the pecan-shaped ones of the princess tree. So that's probably the hallmark feature that I would be looking for, especially as this starts to lose its leaves in the fall. Uh, look for the seed pod differences, as well as, you know, if you feel the leaves, much more of a waxy feel versus the hairy fuzzy of the princess tree. Because we weren't able to see the seed capsules of the princess tree out in the field, I wanted to just show you what it looked like for sake of comparison. So you notice how they're almost like pecan shaped, almost like nuts that compare, that contain these seeds inside. And they'll actually shake uh, and make noise like an instrument if you shake them up. So that's just another thing to be on the lookout for compared to these long string beans of the catalpa seed pods. Again, they persist throughout the winter. So you'll see these long, seed pods of catalpa through the fall and into the winter time and they'll eventually release hundreds of these tiny seeds which uh, contain fibrous wings on them so that, that would also be pretty obvious and you can see that throughout the winter time as well. Um, in terms of their flowers, um, not the best for sake of comparison because generally the princess trees you'd find in our region um, do not bloom. Um, down in the south though, you might see, I'm gonna be on the lookout for princess tree, you'll see these tubular purple flowers, um, very much of a foxglove appearance to it. They typically bloom in Southern states around April, May, or June. Um, and also contain these hairy brown sepals at the base of that tubular flower. Um, and again, just think about hair when you're thinking about the princess tree and that kind of fuzz on it. That's comparing to the catalpa flower, which is white. Uh, typically in our region, they'll be in full, full bloom in June, maybe late May. Very, very fragrant, almost giving off like a vanilla scent. You'll also notice that it has a purple landing strip towards the center of this white flower and a landing strip for um, pollinating insects. In terms of iNaturalist posting instructions, you can post observations of the princess tree under princess tree, which is uh, pretty straightforward, or Polonia tomentosa. You can post observations of the catalpa under I would recommend the, uh, the general genus of catalpas because there are in fact two species that you might find that are naturalized in our region, the Southern and Northern catalpa. So I would just recommend posting uh, for the catalpa tree under the general genus of catalpas. 
Any questions, of course, you can email us at invasives at nynjtc.org, or you can visit our Lower Hudson Prism EcoQuest website, which you can find the link to here. And of course, as Miracle Max would say in The Princess Bride, have fun storm in the castle. Let's go find some princess tree and catalpa trees and enjoy the pursuit. Thank you again to our partners, and we hope to have you part of this month's EcoQuest Challenge. <laughs>